One of the hardest things to learn in any profession is the terms or the jargon that goes along with that profession. When I teach a life science class, always my students, if they're going to run into difficulties right off the bat, it's going to be that new set of vocabulary that they need to learn. And technology is no different. If you get into the IT world, you have to learn a whole batch of new words. This video is going to be a little interesting because we're taking the words out of context and we're going to present the words with the definition. My suggestion on this one is just to make it through the video, get familiar with the words, go, oh, I've heard that word before. And as you progress through your studies, you can always come back to this video and get a better grasp of these terms. If you're studying these mater this material for a certification exam, I always like to recommend getting index cards, getting note cards. What you're going to do with these cards is you're going to write the term or idea on one side of the card and write an explanation on the other side of the card. This is a great study technique and I've been using this technique for over 13 years with my students both in the life science world as well as the IT world. By writing out these index cards or note cards, you're forcing yourself to read the material to then extrapolate the important parts to then put it in your own words and write it down in a note card. So you're writing it, you're looking at it, you are getting a lot of different modalities of learning involved. Also, another really cool feature of having your index cards or note cards is that they can go with you pretty much anywhere you go. Let's say, for example, that you're studying Network Plus out of a big textbook. The big textbook might be a little awkward to bring on, let's say, Metro or at the office or where you work, but note cards can be taken with you anywhere you go. And you can pin up to your cubicle and look at it there. So again, I highly re recommend developing note cards for your studies. Here we go. Backbone, client, host, hub, media, NIC, node, NOS, protocol, router, server, switch, and workstation. The backbone is typically a very high speed, high capacity, long distance network that connects smaller networks together. So for example, in my office, I use Comcast. Comcast has a backbone, has either fiber optic or a very large copper wire that connects our building to other buildings. This big copper wire or this fiber optic wire is the backbone. It's what's going to get our information out of this building out into the internet or out elsewhere in the world. It's going to be very high capacity, hopefully, and it's going to be very expensive and it's going to be very fast. A client. When you think of client, it's best to think of kind of going to a restaurant where you have a server and a client, a customer. The client is any device that's connected to a network and looks for resources, that requests resources. A client can be a computer, it could be a laptop, it could be a tablet, it could be a smartphone, it could be a game console. Host is the other side of this coin. The host is the thing providing those resources. So the client requests, hey look, I need a file. The host then brings that file to the client. So client host. Then we have a hub. A hub is a a uh, dumb device. It's a dumb device. It's basically going to broadcast network data all across everything that's connected to it. So signal goes into the hub. The hub then yells it back out. I got a message. This is the information. All right, that's what a hub does. Very dumb device. Rebroadcast information to everything attached to it. And we'll look at all of these in a lot more detail as we go through this course. I just want to present some fundamental terms right here. Media. Media is any connection device. Anything that's connecting one device to another device. It's what the information is going across. It could be copper cable, it could be fiber optic, it could be wireless. It's how the information is going from one device to another device. NIC. Notice that I did not say NIC card and I had an instructor years ago who was an English major who hated that. He was like, no, a NIC. NIC stands for Network Interface Card. So if you call it a NIC card, you're calling it a Network Interface Card card. English majors, what are you gonna do? Anyhow, a NIC is a Network Interface Card. It is the gateway between your device and the network. It is what allows your computer to talk to the network. A node. 
A node is a generic term meaning any device connected to a network. A NOS is almost like the energy drink. NOS stands for Network Operating System. A NOS is a specially designed operating system. By the way, if you're not familiar with operating systems, you run into them all the time on computers. You run into Microsoft Windows, you run into Linux, you run into Mac OS X. These are operating systems on your own computer. A network operating system, a NOS, is specially designed to handle the demands that a network would put on them. This is more in a server environment. So they would handle user access information, they would handle resource sharing. That's what we're looking at here. NOSes typically require specialized training in order to use them. Some examples of some network operating systems include Unix, Linux, Microsoft Server, various versions of that, as well as the Apple's version OS X server. A protocol. When I was still working up in the DC area for the federal government, we had to learn different protocols, different rules of engagement, different ways to deal with things. So for example, if you ran into somebody from this country, things that might be considered polite in our country would be impolite in their country. Protocols are rules of behavior. In the IT world, a protocol describes the rules that the computers need to work, the nodes need to do, in order to communicate with other devices on a network. And we will get into protocols in excruciating detail before we're done with this series on the Network Plus stuff. Then we have a router. If a hub was, uh, I like turtles, a router is more sophisticated. It is a smart device. It understands where information is supposed to go to, and it will not just repeat it to everyone. It will send information to the appropriate devices. The internet runs on routers. If you're interested in learning more about routers and going on to other levels of certification, the Cisco curriculum, Cisco runs the internet. They make routers and they make operating systems for the routers. A server if we go back to that whole restaurant analogy, the server is a device in the network that's going to manage shared resources. These are typically the more powerful computers that you're going to find in a network. These things are the ones you're dumping some serious cash into. Some examples of servers they have can have specialized functions are things like an email server, file server, print server, and we'll take a look at all of those again in more detail later on. The switch. If we had a hub, which was duh, 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 and a router, which was all sophisticated, then a switch would be clever. A switch can put information where it's supposed to go. It's going to base it off of something else. It's going to base it off of something called a MAC address. And we'll worry about what MAC addresses are later. Our final term is a workstation. By default, a workstation is pretty much your desktop computer. In the next video, we're going to take a look at network topologies.